Okay, it seems one minute we're being told eat more soy. The next we're being told soy is bad. So what is the deal here? Is soy safe? We're going to find out. Naturopathic physician Jared Scourin is here. Good morning to you and thank you for hey, coming Carly, in. Thanks for having me. So, you know, there was this study that was published by the Journal of the National Cancer Institute involving uh, cancer, uh, patients with breast cancer and soy. Right. What was that all about and what do you make of it? Well, it got a lot of media buzz because it associated soy with breast cancer. And like you said, everybody is good. It's ping-ponging back and forth. Do right. you want it? Do you not want it? It's important to understand what the study showed. The study gave their, their patients 30 days of a soy protein shake. Then they looked at the cancer before and after. The tumor size did not change, the biopsies did not change, but what did change were certain breast cancer gene expressions. So we're kind of mm. looking at how your DNA changes with your diet. So unfortunately, it didn't really give us any solid answers. So when it comes to safety, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Yeah, and, and that's what's really important for everybody to understand is there's so many different diets out there, but there's also so many different people out there, and there's not one diet for everybody. So we really need to be individual on who we are, and where we come from in our ancestry. A lot of the soy research associates people with Asian ancestry do very well with soy. They get less cancers and less thyroid issues because they eat soy. So they've noticed scientifically that this ancestral uh, issues and, and connections with diet actually comes from our blood type. So what should viewers listening thinking, okay, where do I fit into all of this? What should they do with this information? Well, the first part is to talk to your doctor. And again, if, if you are interested in your ancestry and your blood type and how that associates with your diet, um, Connecticut actually has the expert on blood type diet. Dr. Peter Diadama works at the University of Bridgeport. Mm. He's associated all of these blood types and different foods. So a, a great resource to go to. But when, when you're generally looking at different types of soy, you first off, you want to make sure that you eat organic, non-GMO soy. That's important. It's and that's marked important. in the grocery store, right? That's marked in the grocery so, store. So it's easy to figure out. And, and last year, Connecticut did pass a genetic, uh, genetic modification labeling law. We just have to wait for some other states to pass that law so that everything needs to be marked, whether it's GMO or non-GMO. So we're okay. getting there. Good, good. So eat the organic stuff. Number two, make sure you eat the soy that's the least processed. So things like tempeh and things like miso and endamame that, that you know you get in what restaurants. Even kids love, yeah. Exactly. That's just the whole soybean. That's not processed. When you get things like tofu or tofu burgers or soy dogs, that kind of stuff, it's gone through a lot of processing. I'm hearing as a mom, keep feeding your kids edamame. Exactly. Okay, good. It's wonderful. Good, because they love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the third thing, if you do have breast cancer, talk to your oncologist about any dietary changes that you need to have. Really good information. Thanks for helping Great. with that. Because I, Carolyn. too, have wondered. Good, bad, ugly, who knows. Everybody's All right. different. Thank you so much, Dr. Scott.